are gonna be awesome. I have a great idea, so I'm gonna get a plate and a bowl. All right, you guys, this is the simplest DIY, but it's gonna be perfect for having guests over this summer, or maybe you're having people over for dinner. Take your bowl and put some E6000 on the base, then add your plate on top of it. Wash it up really well, and then you can use it to display cookies, muffins, fruit, whatever you have for your party. And the tray only cost you $2.50. So when I was tooling around Dollar Tree like I normally do, I came across these really cute little soap containers and I just thought the shape of these were really cute. Plus you got a lot of products with it. So what I decided to do was actually paint the container of this. This is like a five minute DIY. I had taken off all the labels to the soft soap. So I took the lid off of the soap and then I used a little bit of painter's tape at the top and then all I did was spray paint this with a gray color. Once that dried, I put the lid back on and this is how cute it looks in my bathroom for $1. So when I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I found these incense containers that I thought were really cute. I also grabbed some glass jars. So I wanted to make these instant containers lids for my jars. So they actually fit on there very nicely. So I'm gonna start by filling the incense hole at the top with some wood filler. I'll let that dry completely. Next, I'm going to spray paint the lids. I decided to go with a navy color, but you could go with any color that fits the color scheme of your bathroom. And I'm gonna start by spray painting them on the bottom. Once that dries, I'll come in and spray two coats on the top. Next, all you have to do is fill up your glass jars with any bathroom items that you wanna put in there and just put the lids on top. These are gonna to look so cute sitting out in your bathroom and be totally functional as well. Sconces and wall lights are super popular right now. Everybody's wanting to add these into your house, but sometimes you may not know how to wire it in. So I wanna give you an option that you don't have to wire in at all and it's really affordable. So for this project, you're going to need one of their drying racks, a napkin holder from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need two puck lights from Amazon. I'll link them for you down in the description box and a placemat. My placemat, I actually purchased at Walmart. You wanna get your drying rack from Dollar Tree because it's definitely gonna be a little bit more flimsy and bendable. So I'm gonna start with my drying rack, pushing it around my napkin holder to create a nice arch. Once I have it in the right shape, I need to attach the drying rack to my napkin holder. So I started this by adding in some floral wire. And this held it okay, but then I went in with a zip tie and that worked even better to secure it in place. Once you have your base in place, now you can come in and wrap it around the edges. So I found a place mat that fit almost perfectly. I ended up having to cut some of the drying rack down at the bottom. Then I'm just going to wrap the place mat around and I'll hot glue it in the back.
I purchased my puck lights in a pack of two. You're gonna have to put a battery in them to make them work. Now to attach these, you're gonna use the command strips that were provided. I'm gonna put them on the back of my puck lights. Then I'm gonna put one on the top of my napkin holder and the other one, I'm going to flip the sconce upside down and put it on the bottom part of my napkin holder. That way, when they're turned on, you're gonna have light illuminating from the top and the bottom. They're touch lights, so all you have to do is touch them to turn them on. You could also get remote ones that are a little bit more expensive if you wanna go that route as well. To attach these to the wall, all you have to do is put some command strips. And here's how it looks on my wall. Next, I'm gonna be creating a decorative accent. All you're going to need are some foam balls. I got two different sizes from Dollar Tree, and also you're gonna need some nautical rope. Now, I buy my nautical rope off of Amazon in a big spool. It's also available at Dollar Tree, so whichever works best for you, I'll put the link to the one I buy in the description box as well. So this is a really easy project to do. You're gonna start by hot gluing your foam ball and wrapping your nautical rope around. You're gonna do this till you get to the other side. Now it's okay if you leave a little bit of an opening on either side. Now when I did the first one, I realized I probably left a little bit too much of an opening, so I added some additional nautical rope to that one. I'm going to wrap the nautical rope going the other direction, making sure that I cover up that white space that I had on either one. So I'm just gonna wrap until I've covered the entire foam ball, and then I'll cut it off and hot glue it in place. I'm gonna repeat those same steps to create the second smaller foam ball. Now, I just created two. You could do all five or you know, however many you want for your project, but they look great as a little accent sitting out in your decor. So I was on Pottery Barn's website looking for a little bit of inspiration and I saw this set of marble like soap containers, toothbrush holders, and I thought we could recreate this from Dollar Tree. So I picked up a tray, soap dish, soap container, and toothbrush holder. And some of them were already white, but I wanted them to all be the same colors. So I just started by spraying those with two coats of white spray paint. Next, I wanted to give them a marble appearance. So what I did was I grabbed a tub of water. Now you guys have seen me do this on my channel before and I wanted them to be like a gray color. So I had this spray paint that was kind of like a translucent that I decided to use for this project. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray your spray paint on the top of the water. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create fun little patterns. Then you can take your items and dip them into the water. Once you pull your item up, you're going to see whatever design you put in the water on your container. So I repeated this with all of my items to give them a marbled finish. I did have a little bit of trouble with the tray. I kind of had to move it around to get it in the water where I wanted it to. And the thing is, is if you don't feel like they have enough paint on them, just add more paint to your water and put your items back in until you get that desired look. Now another thing I do when I pull the items out, I'll take a paper towel and kind of wipe off any excess that I don't like the look of. And that just kind of helps as you're going through the process. Here's how my Dollar Tree marble containers look styled on my vanity.
Next, I'm gonna show you how I created a decorative vase. Now, for this project, you're only going to need two items. You're gonna need a clear vase from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some of their bamboo skewers. Now, you guys, I love these bamboo skewers. I use them in so many different crafts and DIYs, and this is the time of year to pick them up. You can grab them in the smaller size as well as the longer ones. I recommend grabbing a few packs of both of these. I wanted my bamboo skewers to go around my clear jar, so I needed to cut them down. So I was kind of experimenting with the best way to do this. So I laid them out on a board and I used some frog painters tape to kind of hold them in place because I was hoping to cut them all at the same size. And I taped them on both sides. I figured out exactly where I wanted to cut them. I laid the clear vase down and then I drew a line across so I knew where they needed to be cut. Then I used my saw, which is great for cutting like smaller items. Then I sawed through the bamboo skewers. Now, as I was doing this, I was kind of moving them around and my lines weren't straight. And so I cut them about halfway and I figured that would be okay. For the rest of them, I would just kind of pop them off. Once you create a small cut, you can always like pop them off at the ends. This works well too. If you're just doing one of them, you can always cut it at the end and then pop off the excess. Next, I was going to attach my bamboo skewers to this clear jar. I found the E6000 was the best option. You wanna put the E6000 on with just a little end of your bamboo skewer so that you're not adding too much glue because we're not gonna be painting this. You don't want a lot of excess glue. So I added a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom put my bamboo skewer on. Then I went about a half an inch and put another one on. I did this all the way around the clear jar. Now E6000 usually takes overnight to dry. So I put some painter's tape really lightly around my jar. I didn't like press it down firmly and I'm gonna let that sit overnight. The next day I came in and removed the painter's tape and everything was glued on really well. I styled this on my coffee table with a few faux stems. Another solar light idea that you can do, this one is gonna be great for your outdoor dining tables or maybe you have an outdoor coffee table. You wanna pick up five more solar lights. These I got in the silver color. You're also going to need a four by four board. Now I grabbed mine at Lowe's, but you could pick it up anywhere. So the first thing I did was I just cut my board down to size based on the size of my coffee table. You can make this any size you want. You can make it smaller or bigger, but I just wanted it to fit well on my coffee table. This is actually a really easy DIY to do, but you are gonna need some tools. Like one of the tools you're gonna need is a large set of drill bits to create holes for the solar lights to go in. I took the bottom piece off of my silver solar lights. I was trying to figure out which drill bit was going to be about the same size as my solar light. So once I picked one, I added it to my drill and I will link to all these tools down in the description box for you guys. Next, I came in and I marked my board. My board was about 30 inches long. So every five inches I made a mark so I knew exactly where to drill. Next, I came in with my drill and drilled holes straight down. I then would put a solar light into that hole just to make sure it was gonna fit in there securely. You can always adjust your drill bit size as well. Next, I sanded down my entire board and I came in with a dark stain. Now to stain a board, I usually just will brush the color on and then I immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. Once your board is dry, you can add in your lights. And here's how this solar light centerpiece turned out. Hi 
have you guys seen containers where people put in longer matchsticks or matchsticks with colors on them? I just find them really appealing. I feel like it's a really cute home decor piece that you can put out with your decor. And I wanted to recreate it for less. So I went to Dollar Tree and picked up some of their clear shower rings. Next, I'm gonna glue these together. So the glue that I'm using is a glue that holds really well and it's gonna have to sit up overnight. So I added some glue around the edges and then put the rings on one by one. Now, once I had it stacked up, I set it to the side and let it dry overnight. Like I didn't do anything to it. When I came back the next day, the glue was bonded really well. Next, I spray painted it with two to three coats of a white flat spray paint. I wanted it to have like a speckledy stone look to it. So I found this spray paint at Walmart. It's called Stone Spray Paint. And it's so cool. When you spray it on, it just gives it this muckledy finish to it. So I just lightly sprayed that on the entire piece. From there, you can add a little bit of filler to the base of this. Then you can add in your matchsticks. I grabbed mine off of Amazon. I'll link them for you in the description box. And I think this looks so cute sitting out next to candles or other decor. Recently, when I was at Dollar Tree, I came across these ferns, which are awesome greenery for Dollar Tree. I was so excited that they have something out like that. So I picked up a couple of them. I also picked up this large container. I think it's supposed to be a drinking cup, but I thought it would make a perfect vase. I started by spray painting the vase with two coats of white spray paint. Now I wanted it to have a speckled look to it. So I took some black paint and mixed it with water. Then I kind of just dabbed the paint onto my jar. I wasn't really liking the look of that. So then I came in with a sponge that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. So I dabbed it around and the spots were a lot more muted. With my ferns, I wanted to mimic the look of feathers or the pompous grass that you see everywhere that's so popular. I grabbed out some beigey colors that I had. Now, I know this color is a little different. It's a color that my husband had. It's a camouflage color. So I started by painting all of the ferns on both sides with this kind of dark tan color. Once that had a chance to dry, I realized that I wanted them to have a little bit more dimension. So I came back in with a lighter shade. Now I just did the lighter shade very sparingly. So it kind of gave me that two toned effect. I added the ferns to my container and here's a look at the final look. Now, when I was doing the DIY with the palette earlier, I was looking at it and thinking, you know, this would make a really cool soap dish because wood items are so in right now. All I did with this little palette was I stained it with one coat of that golden oak stain and then I wiped it off with a paper towel. And I put it out with some decorative soap. Doesn't this look cute sitting out on my vanity? You guys are gonna have to let me know if you like it. So this next project is probably my favorite one that I created in this whole bundle. I love these little candy dishes that you can buy at Dollar Tree. Now these are located over in like the party supply section and I always like to pick up three. Groupings of three just in my opinion look so much better. So I'm gonna start by putting a layer of painter's tape on the top of each of these containers. And I'm gonna to try to make them all look the same and have the tape at about the same level.
Then I'm going to spray paint everything with a flat black spray paint. Now this is going to take at least two coats. And I also turned them so they were upside down so that I didn't spray the inside of my containers. Once that has a chance to dry, I will remove the tape. And then you could do so many things with this. I'm going to be filling it with some natural stones from Dollar Tree and then putting in three of my favorite succulents. This is so quick and easy to do, and how adorable does this look sitting out on my table? So I love the look of wall hangings, but for me, they have to be super simple because I just don't have the patience to tie all the knots. So here is a super simple macrame wall hanging that anyone can do. So what you wanna do is pick up a plunger at Dollar Tree. Now, this next step is optional. I wanted to cut off the little ridge sections. I just used my saw to cut off that edge, but you don't have to do that. You could cover it up with the twine as well. Next, I'm gonna use some basic white yarn that I got at Michael's, but the last time I was at Dollar Tree, they had yarn, and this was my first time seeing it. So if you're lucky, you may be able to find some yarn at Dollar Tree. I know that they had white and a bunch of different other colors. I used two spools of yarn in order to do this entire wall hanging. So what I did was I just took one piece of yarn, wrapped it around the edge, tied it in place, and then I made a hanger on both sides, wrapped it around, tied it so it was secure so I could hang it up. Now, whenever you're doing a wall hanging, you wanna make your pieces longer than what you think because once you start either tying knots or doing different things to it, it's going to make your yarn a lot shorter. So I'm using a piece of wood that's about two feet long. I started wrapping the yarn around this wood about 14 times. Then when I got a bundle done, I took it off the wood and I cut one of the edges. And I repeated this for all of my bundles. Once I had all my bundles created, I put them over on top of my wood dowel rod. Now here's where the super easy part comes in. I got some clear rubber bands from Dollar Tree. These are just in the hair section. You can use them on like little kids hair. Once I put the yarn over, I took a rubber band and tied it at the top. And I did that with all of my yarn bundles that I put on. Next, I'm going to do another rubber band about an inch down all the way across. So I wanted to create a V pattern. So in order to do that, all I did was I left out one of the yarn hangings on either side every time I went down so that it gradually created my V shape until I was only left with one rubber band. I promise this was totally easy to create. finish it off, you want to cut the edges. Now, sometimes I will cut at a V shape, but I figured since it's already doing a V shape with my rubber bands, I wanted to cut it straight across, which is a little bit harder. So I just did my very best to try to smooth the yarn out and then I cut it straight across. And as you can see, I think it looks adorable, especially here on my backdrop.
So when I was on McGee & Co's website, I found this next wall art piece and it was so incredibly overpriced, but honestly so simple and something I knew that I could recreate. This wall art was over $3,000. So I thought, let's go ahead and recreate it. I found a pack of canvases at Five Below that I picked up for $5. Now for this project, you're just going to need some macrame cord and some nautical rope. I'm gonna link both of the ones that I use on a regular basis in the description box below. Now on each of my canvas, I marked where I wanted the center strip to be on both of the canvases. I started with one of my yarns and I hot glued it to the back and then I wrapped it around, hot glued it to the other side where I'd measured and then I continued to wrap it around, hot gluing it periodically. Now some of my tips whenever you're wrapping yarn or cord around a canvas, you wanna try to keep the yarn or twine as close as you can. It just gives it much more of a high-end look and it looks a lot more seamless. Now for this project, you wanna to try to keep it as level as possible. That's just gonna help you when you get to the ends. So I wrapped the cord around the middle and then once I got to my other lines that I had marked off, I just hot glued it in place and cut off the excess. Now I'm going to take my other rope and hot glue that to the edge where I just stopped on my center portion and I'm going to wrap that hot gluing it until I get to the very end. Now, once you get to the end, you wanna start adding in more hot glue just so that it gives it more longevity. It's gonna hold in place when it's hanging on your wall. And I'm going to wrap it around, also making sure to completely cover your canvas. You wanna make sure your canvas is completely covered and then you can hot glue the excess onto the back. Once I do one side, I'm going to flip and do the other side. Now, I was thinking this project was actually going to take a while, but it went considerably faster than I thought. So if you're hesitant to try it, it really wasn't that long to create. Now you're going to repeat these steps on your second canvas, but you're just going to switch the material. So you're gonna start with your macrame, putting that on in the middle, and then for your edges, you can add on your nautical row. You're gonna follow the same tips by making sure you add it really close together and covering the canvas on either of the edges. I really love this grouping of two. It adds so much texture to my walls. Next, we're gonna be making a hanging planter. I love the way hanging planters look. They're great for like a corner of your office. You could also put them in your kitchen and bathrooms are great for these as well because sometimes bathrooms are small and you don't have a lot of room to decorate. So you could put one of these kind of maybe over like in your toilet area. That's a great option for these as well. So you're gonna take any small container. This is one I actually picked up at the thrift store and I'm gonna spray it with two coats of a flat black spray paint. Now to create the hanging portion of my planter, I wanted to use some faux leather. I wasn't able to find any at Dollar Tree and I went online and found this whole pack of faux leather on Amazon that I probably could use for a ton of projects for super inexpensive. I'll link to it down in the description box for you guys if you want to check it out. I'm going to use this medium faux leather color. So I'm going to start by cutting out a square that's going to fit up nicely around my planter. Next I wanted to create holes on the edges of the square that I cut out. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and my wire cutters to cut a little hole. Now I don't want it to be too big because I'm actually trying to put in some nautical rope in there and if it's too big, the nautical rope's just gonna pull through. So I did kind of a smaller hole. Next, I'm gonna be using my nautical rope. This again, I'll link for you guys. You guys know I use this all the time, but I'm gonna cut off a long strip. I'm actually gonna make four strips to use for this project. I'm gonna pull the nautical rope through. The faux leather I wanna show is actually gonna be placed on the bottom. Once I pull the rope through, I'm gonna tie it in a knot on the bottom. I'm gonna repeat this with all three of my other sides. Now, once I get all the rope through, I'm going to put my planter in the middle. I'm gonna cut off any extra string down at the bottom of my knots. 
And the plant that I'm gonna be using is one that I love from Ikea. It's this big hanging plant. It's usually out this time of year, but it's around five, six dollars. It's so great, you guys. I have several of these. If you have an Ikea, I would definitely pick it up. So I'm gonna put that plant in the middle. I'm gonna pull up on my planter just to kind of see how it looks. I'm gonna tie those together. And here's how this planter looks hanging up. I just think it's adorable. So Pottery Barn has this really cool white mirror with like this white background and I just love the look of it. I knew that I could recreate this. So I grabbed a piece of white foam board from Dollar Tree. I also had one of their black circle mirrors already on hand. They sell these at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to remove the mirror portion out of the frame and then I'm going to paint the frame with two coats of white spray paint. Then I used a straight edge and traced out where I wanted to cut. Next, I decided to use the X-Acto knife that they have in the craft section at Dollar Tree for this project. And I will say it did cut really well. I was able to cut the foam board with two cuts. Now, sometimes when you cut foam board, it's not perfect on the edges. So I went back in with just a little piece of sandpaper and I sanded it down until it looked, you know, exactly the way I needed it to look. Next, I'm going to assemble my mirror. Then I'll add some hot glue to the back of the mirror and put it onto my foam board. And here's a look at how the mirror looks styled. Now the next DIY is kind of like a two-parter DIY. I had this wood slab piece that I wanted to create a riser with. So I also found these hexagon beads off of Amazon and I'm going to hot glue four of those to the bottom of my wood piece. Now this created a really cute riser for me. Now on top of the riser, I wanted to add some fun jars that would look kind of cute this spring. So you can get these jars at Dollar Tree. These two jars I had were actually from the thrift store. I'm gonna be using a spray paint called Krylon Sea Glass and I have one that's in like a green color but I also have an amber color as well. You guys are seeing me test out one of my new favorite products which is this little turnstile that I got for spray painting. I love this so much for spray painting when it's cold out Outside because I can turn it as I'm spray painting and kind of spray it but then it has handles down at the bottom so I can lift it up and take it inside to dry because you guys know you can't leave things outside when it's not warm enough to dry so I will link this product for you down in the description box but I think I'm gonna buy a couple more of these because you guys know I'm spray painting all the time so I did one light coat of spray paint on both of the jars next I have this wood bendable piece that I will link for you as well that I'm I'm gonna cut off and make a little base at the bottom. So I made sure I just had enough that it would go over the other wood piece, maybe like a couple of centimeters. Then I'm gonna add some E6000 to the back of these pieces. I'm also gonna put hot glue so it stays in place and I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom edge. Here's how these vases turned out with my wood riser. In my last Five Below video, I picked up this rug. I had no idea what I was gonna do with it. It has actually been sitting in my office for a while and I've been thinking, okay, what do I wanna do with this? So I had this idea that maybe I should try to make it into a like wall art piece. So I grabbed one of those plastic trays from Dollar Tree for this project. I cut out my rug so that it just hung over the edges of this tray about two inches. I placed some Mod Podge on the bottom of my tray. Then I put the rug in place. Then I was noticing that the Mod Podge wasn't holding it in place, so I came back in and added in some hot glue as well. To finish off the edges, I cut off any excess and then I turned it to the backside and hot glued it in place. 
Now after I hot glued, I noticed that some of the rug was coming up. So I just took a plate and put it down on top of that with a weight to hold it in place until it had a chance to completely dry with the Mod Podge. And I styled it on my dresser with a few other items and I just think it looks awesome. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make some adorable triangle coasters slash trivets. You could really use either one with just two products. So you're going to need some felt. I think if you have a little bit stronger felt that doesn't bend as well, that's probably gonna work best for this project. I picked up a felt in a cream color. You're also going to need these half circle beads. Now I've used these in projects before. I'll link them for you down in the description box. And then you're going to need some sort of adhesive. I recommend something like E6000 or a construction grade adhesive that kind of sets up overnight. So I'm gonna start by creating a triangle shape. So I'll put my beads down at the bottom and I'll go until I get to the top. So for my trivet, I didn't want to see the felt underneath. And the only way I could figure out how to do that was to place the beads on there and then cut it. So that's kind of what I did. I put all my beads on there and then I cut both of the edges. Now, some of my beads fell off as I was doing that, but that was no big deal. I could just place my beads back in place. And then that way I was assured that you weren't going to see the felt underneath. So I created three different trivets using the same method. I just changed up the size. Now, if you want them to all be the same size, you could do that. I wanted mine to have a little bit of variation. But here is how these trivets slash coasters turned out. When I'm at Dollar Tree, I always walk past those green wreath forms and I don't ever pick them up, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna grab a stack of these and do a DIY with them. So we're gonna turn these wreath forms into a vase slash planter that I've seen on a bunch of different high-end sites. So I'm gonna start by taking off the tags that are on there. Luckily, these came off pretty easily. So I want to stack them up. So this is really easy to do. I'm just going to hot glue and stack them on. Now you want to make sure that you concentrate your glue on the inside so you don't see glue on the outside. That never looks good. Now I started by putting some E6000 with it, but as I was going up, I realized that hot glue would work just as well. As I was stacking them, I added some additional hot glue to the inside for added support. Next, I'm going to take this outside. I ended up doing three coats of a cream colored spray paint on here because this is foam. So it's going to absorb that spray paint and just kind of soak it up. So you're gonna to have to do probably three heavy coats on here. So I just did three coats, letting them dry in between. I'm gonna put this on my spray paint turnstile I bought. I'll link it for you guys down in the description box. I just purchased this and it's so cool. I love it for spray painting. Now to give it kind of that higher end look, I found this spray paint called Stone and that is going to give a cool speckledy look. So I'm just gonna spray one coat all along the edge. A little of this goes a long way, so you don't wanna spray a ton of it. Once that had a chance to dry, you can put any stems in here, but I wanted to use the Dollar Tree just to kind of show you guys how you could do this with Dollar Tree items. So I'm gonna fill the bottom. You could put in really anything, Walmart sacks, Dollar Tree sacks work great. And then Dollar Tree has several new spring stems out. These are the ones that I picked up and I'm just going to place those in my container. Now, if you want more of like a long arrangement, you can do that as well, but you'll probably have to pick those up at like Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And here's how this planter turned out. You may have seen 
seen this next item that I found in the stores. I thought they would be such a cool patchwork wall art. So I picked up six of them. I have a lot of sample paints around my office and I grabbed some different sample paints. I grabbed five of them that I thought would coordinate well together and were colors that I wanted displayed in my home. And I think the best way to apply your paint is with a flat brush. So I used a flat brush and painted on the interior portion of the hexagons. As I began painting, I really wanted to lay them out together to make sure that I was happy with where all the colors were. So I laid them out and kind of picked my colors as I went. Once I got all the painting done, I E6000 them together just to hold them in place. Let that sit overnight. The next day I wanted to give even more additional support to this. So I flipped it onto the back and I just took some popsicle sticks that I had. You could use, really use any wood piece that you have. I broke them in half and then I hot glued each of the seams on the patchwork wall art. And you could hang this up in your home and it, I just love the texture that it provides and it's a super unique wall art piece. So one of the questions I get asked frequently is about the centerpiece box that I use on several of my videos. So I actually wanted to create another centerpiece box with wood that I had in my garage. So I found two scrap boards that were one by six boards. Now I had to use two because that was what I had in my garage. If I would have gone out and bought them, I probably just would have had one board, but I wanted to make use out of what I had. So I took those two boards and I put them next to each other. That was going to to be the base of my box. Then I found a one by two board. I use these frequently. They make really great borders and I'm going to measure the edges of my boards and cut out two small pieces to go on the edge. And then I'm going to measure the front side to have two boards that are going to go on the front and the back. These boards are just the right size to make a nice little lip around my centerpiece box. Now before I put them together, I wanted to stain all of the boards. So I stained them with golden oak. So for the two boards in the middle, I'm going to put them together with wood glue. I just bought a new tool, this finishing nailer I'm super excited about. This is the same one that my friend Christina, the DIY mommy used, and she told me this is the one I needed to get. So that's the one I got. She really likes this. So I'm gonna take the finishing nailer and I'm going to nail in the boards on the side and then I will nail on the boards to the front and the back.
Now to decorate my board, I found these really cute vases at Dollar Tree, so I picked up five of them, and I'm just going to spray them with a black spray paint. Now to fill these, I found these green sprigs at Hobby Lobby, so I'm just going to put these florals in, but really you could use any florals. And here's a look at how the centerpiece turned out. So for our next project, you're going to need some glass bottles from Dollar Tree. Really any size will work, but these two that I have fit a taper candle in there very well. You're also going to need some eucalyptus. Now the one I got, I purchased at Target, but you could also buy real eucalyptus at Trader Joe's, so that's an option as well. So I'm gonna start by cutting my greenery and adding that into my bottle. Next, I had a variety of taper candles on hand. Most of my taper candles I purchased at Walmart. So I'm just gonna put a taper candle in the top of all of my bottles. Now, if for some reason your tapered candle is too big, you can always kind of shave it off on the side so it fits into your jar. Now I decided to fill the bottles with water as well. This is an optional step. You could leave the water out if you wanted to. I think this is such a fresh and fun project for spring and it's gonna look so pretty sitting now. When I was in Dollar Tree and found this rainbow sign, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I knew it was gonna be perfect for a macrame wall hanging because rainbows are so popular right now. I'm sure you guys have been seeing them everywhere. Now this is a super simple project. All you're gonna need is some yarn of your choice. I really wanted some thick yarn. The yarn that I'm using, I actually purchased at the thrift store. I think one of them I may have gotten from Walmart. You can get yarn from Dollar Tree as well, but you can definitely find other places to buy it super inexpensive. Now, whenever you're making a macrame piece, I always find that it's better to keep your pieces longer because you can always go back in and trim them a little bit. I'm gonna start in the outside edge. So I'm gonna pull my piece long and then I'm gonna hot glue it around the outside edge. Now the key here is to make sure that you cover all of that wood because you don't want it to show through. I'm gonna keep cutting pieces about the same length at the bottom. I'm gonna bring them up and hot glue them next to the piece that I had just put in. Now again, make sure that you're making these pieces tight together so you can't see any of the wood or sign behind it. That's one of the major keys when you're doing these macrame pieces. So I really didn't have much of a plan. I just put on yarn until I was happy with it. Then I switched to another color. and then I finished it off with a third color. Now I love macrame because you can really cater this to your taste, put as many colors as you like, or you know, just do it all in one color. Now, once I had all the pieces on there, I hung it up and I cut them straight across. You could also cut them at an angle if you'd like to do that as well. And I love how this looks. I even put it up on my backdrop. Okay. 
I'm gonna be creating another planter using that green planter, but it's gonna look totally different than the first one we made. Dollar Tree also sells these wood pieces, so I'm going to get that out and measure out. I want four pieces that are two inches long. Then I'm gonna use my saw and cut those pieces up. You guys have probably seen the planters that have the little wood bases. That's what I'm trying to recreate. So I'm gonna use some E6000 and hot glue to attach those wood pieces to the bottom of my green container. You can fill this planter with any faux plant or real plant that you like. So this next DIY I did was kind of interesting because part of it failed and part of it looked really great. So I'm gonna show you how I did it and I know what I should have done to make it better. So I'll let you know that so that you don't make the same mistake that I did. So I've noticed on high-end sites, they have a lot of sculptural style pieces and I wanted to try to create one of my own. So you're going to need some sort of base. I'm gonna start with those wood slices and I'm gonna put some wood filler in those wood slices because there was a little hole in there and I wanted to make sure that I covered that up. So I'm also going to be using dowel rods for this project. I'm gonna cut the dowel rods to the size that I want to use. The other things I'm gonna be using are floral wire from Dollar Tree, and I'm also gonna be using the wood beads I use in all of my projects. Now I'm gonna start by shaping my wire into kind of like a horseshoe shape, maybe a little bit more curved, like almost a circle that's not closed at the top. And one of the circles I'm actually going to make larger than the other and I'm gonna start stringing the beads onto my wire. So here's where I made my first mistake. With my larger circle, I should have used two or three wires because the wire I used was not strong enough in the end to hold up this one. Now my smaller one, it held up just fine. I didn't have any problems, but I did have problems with the larger one kind of toppling over. So right here, I would have put in some more wires with this one. So I strung all my beads on. Once I got to the top, I used hot glue at the top of the bead to hold all the beads in place. Next, I'm gonna take a dowel rod and I'm gonna hot glue that to the center portion of my beads. And I'm going to put a lot of hot glue on there. I'm gonna push it to where it's connected to my beads. Once that dries, let it dry, let it set. I'm going to add some hot glue to the back of my beads as well. And then I'm gonna hot glue the dowel rod to the base. I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of hot glue and then I'm gonna build it up. I'm actually gonna add quite a bit more hot glue, making sure I hold on to it until it has a chance to set. Now, once all that is done, I'm gonna spray the entire piece with two coats of a matte black spray paint. Now, for the first two days that I had this, everything was fine, they stood up great, everything was great. But by like the second and third day when I started to take pictures, one of them just wasn't standing up. So the picture I have to show you is of the smaller one because the smaller one is great. So if you do this project, make sure you use a little bit more wire or maybe more of a heavy duty wire. I have to say this trip was pretty exciting for me. I was so excited to find the ferns, but I was probably equally as excited to find these baskets. Dollar Tree now has these really cute baskets. So I picked one up, not really knowing what I was going to do with it. So I've been noticing a lot of the baskets at Pottery Barn and in the stores have these braided handles or some kind of handle on it. I thought that'd be great to update our basket. So I grabbed out some nautical rope and then I also had this really pretty navy blue yarn from Dollar Tree. I hope you guys are able to find the yarn that they have at Dollar Tree now. So I'm gonna be making handles with my nautical rope. I cut it down so that it would fit nicely on the side of my basket and then I made an identical piece. Next, I started my yarn up about two inches from the bottom of my nautical rope and hot glued it and then I began wrapping it around. I hot glued it periodically but you really don't need to add much hot glue. And I wrapped it around until I got to about leaving another two inches on the other side. hot glued that in place and cut off the excess.
Now with my ends that are sticking out, I wanted these to look like fringe, so I just kind of unraveled them and made them look fringy. Is fringy a word? I don't think that's a word. Next, I'm going to hot glue these handles to the side. Now, they're not gonna be on there super secure, so they're more of a decorative handle, but you could always, you know, sew them on if you wanted them to be really secure, or you could always use E6000. So I'm gonna use some hot glue and hot glue them in place. I'm gonna make an identical handle for the other side of my basket. And I styled this with a plant, but you could style it any way you like. And I'm so in love with these baskets. So at a lot of the high-end stores, I'm seeing a lot of vases that have texture on it. So I wanted to create a version of that. So I got another one of the clear glass containers. I mean, I have so many of these, it's just not even funny. And then I also picked up a thing of the pearls. So I'm gonna start by putting the pearls on this container. At first, I really didn't know exactly how I was gonna do this, but I kind of, came up with a pattern as I was working. So I started by just doing a one strip around the top. And then I decided let's create some triangles on either side. And it ended up that they worked out perfectly. I ended up having like the exact right amount. I don't even know how that happened. But to do this, all I did was take four of the little pearls, put them down, then I did three, two, and one. And then I switched from there on the opposite side, doing the exact same thing. So four, three, two, and one on the pearls. And I did that all the way around. And now the great thing about these pearls is they have adhesive on them, so you don't have to glue them or anything. And I didn't have any problems with them coming off. Next, I took this and spray painted it with two coats of black spray paint. And I think this looks great sitting out on my hutch. Love the look of these hooks. If you guys know anything about buying hooks, they could be really expensive. So I'm gonna grab some of these. I'm also gonna grab these little wood decor pieces. I have a DIY in mind for them. They come in wood, but you can also get them in these different colors as well. So on a higher end website, I found this like message board coat hanger and it was really cool, but I definitely knew that I could recreate it with Dollar Tree items. So I'm gonna do a DIY with some items that I found. I'm gonna start with the two seahorse signs and I wanna connect these two signs. I had some large popsicle sticks that I already had in my stash. I'm gonna push the two signs together and then I'm gonna put hot glue on the popsicle sticks and put them on the back of the sign. I'll do this all the way across and then I wanted it to be even more stable so I came back in between and added some more popsicle sticks. I just cut the top portion off. I also grabbed a box from Dollar Tree and some wood pieces, and I cut the wood pieces in half. But with all of my pieces, I stained them in the color golden oak. I'm just gonna use a piece of a foam brush to put the stain onto my boxes, and then I'll immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. If you want the stain color to be more intense, just leave the stain on a little bit longer before you take the excess off. From there, I laid out where I wanted the components on the box where I felt like it would fit best for me. To add them to the supporting piece, I put some E6000 on there. I also added hot glue, so I got that instant hold, but that E6000 is a really great bond and it's gonna hold up better.
with the hangers that I found in that new shore living section, I'm going to remove those. I'm gonna place three of them onto my organizer. I'm gonna line them up straight and mark holes for where I'm going to drill the holes. With my drill, I'm gonna drill through the wood and then I'll place the hangers back on and use the same screws that they came with to attach them to the board. Now I wanted those pieces that I put on there with glue to be really sturdy, so I drilled holes from the back and then added in additional screws to make sure that it was nice and supported. On one of the shore living coat hangers, there's a little backing piece. I removed that. I put that on the back of my piece so it would hang on the wall. Now, if you didn't want to hang it on the wall, you could always add magnets and put it on your fridge. But here's how it looks hanging on the wall. You can put all of your daily use items on here. So I found a lot of great things in the serving aisle. And one of the things that I came across was this really cool serving bowl. And I loved that it had this like great texture on it. So I'm gonna spray paint it with two coats of white spray paint. So once that is completely dry, then I'm gonna get out a color called Elephant by Waverly. And I'm also gonna grab one of my large foam brushes. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of that paint on the foam brush, not a lot, cause I want this to be a light layer. And then I'm just going to brush lightly that Elephant paint onto my textured piece. Now I'm trying to just do a top layer so that I really get that texture popping out. So you could always go back and add more paint. So start lightly and then you can always add more. I think this is a great decorative bowl that you could put as a centerpiece or out on your countertop. Now, if you're looking for bathroom storage ideas at Dollar Tree, make sure you go to the glass jar section because these are some of the best things you can get to organize your bathroom. I got the largest jars that I could find. I bought them in a set of three. Sets of three just look great. So I always try to buy things in sets of three if I can. Next, I'm going to spray paint the lids with two coats of a white spray paint. Then I came in with some rub and buff and put that around the edges. Next, I'm gonna come in with some gold handles that I already had on hand. These were ones that I was using in another project that I bought on Amazon. If I can find them, I will link them for you guys in the description box. And I just used some E6000 to attach those to the top of the lids. Make sure you're using E6000 or construction style adhesive glue for this because other glues are just not gonna hold these in place. And that's all there is to this. These are great for all those little items that you have out in your bathroom. So I needed a canvas. Now at Dollar Tree, their biggest canvas is I think 11 by 14, but it's not a thick one. So I wanted one that was a little bit bigger. A place that I have found that you can get a really good deal is at five below. You can get a pack of two canvases that are 16 by 20, which I think is a great deal for five bucks. So I'm gonna use a 16 by 20 canvas. I'm also going to be using the twine that you can pick up in the crafter square. Now I believe for this project, I ended up using nine rolls of it. You could also get a large larger roll off of Amazon, but I wanted to show you how you could do it with Dollar Tree items. Now this project, I have to say, took me a while to do, but it's super simple. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by gluing your twine to the back of your canvas. Then you're just going to start wrapping it in one direction. You wanna make sure that your twine is really close together so you can't see the white behind it. Thank you. 
Once you're happy with how far you've made it, just hot glue it to the back and cut off the excess. From there, you're gonna switch directions. So if you were horizontal, now you wanna add your twine vertically. And again, you wanna come back in and do it opposite every time. You wanna kind of move around where you're putting it so that it's not always in the same location. What that's gonna do, it's gonna create kind of like a fun overlapping pattern. You'll just continue adding twine until you get the entire piece covered. This looks great in a grouping of wall art, or I think it can definitely stand on its own. But the cost of this wall art piece was around $12. For this next project, I had a vision in mind, but I wasn't sure it was going to totally work out. So I had my husband help me with the measurements just because he's really good at that. So it ended up working out, so I'm really excited to show this one to you. So what you're gonna need for this project are two of the Dollar Tree cutting boards. So we marked both of the boards at five and a half inches. Then we traced the edge of the cutting board because we were going to be cutting it out. But we were only going to be cutting out half of the cutting board. So we marked up three and a half inches. Now here's where we got a little tripped up. We had to figure out which sides we were going to cut so that they sandwiched together. So we kind of drew a little line to know which side to cut. Next, we used a saw to cut out the notches on both of the cutting boards. Now that the hard part was out of the way, all we had to do was sandwich the two together to create a perfect little book holder. This is great to set out as a coffee book holder or you could also use it when displaying a cookbook. And I'm really excited how this turned out for only $2. Now we all love the planters that they have at Dollar Tree and I'm always trying to think of new ways that I can dress them up a little bit. So I had this basket weave gray planter that I just think is adorable. I love it so much. I'm gonna start by wrapping some twine around it three times. Once I wrap it around three times, I'm going to tie it in place. Now I wanted to add some beads to the front of it. I had some gray beads as well as like some smaller, like natural colored beads. Now to lace the beads on, I find that it's easier if I wrap a little bit of tape at the bottom of my twine and it just, I don't know, I feel like it strings the beads on there so much easier. So I'm gonna alternate my beads, adding six beads on each of my twine pieces. Then I will tie the twine together. Now I wanted to create a little tassel, so I'm gonna take the twine and I'm just gonna wrap it around my hands until I have as much as I think it'll look nice and full. I'll take that piece and I'm gonna tie it to the bottom of where I had the beads, and I'll just tie that in a double knot. Next, I'm going to wrap it to make it look like a tassel. So I'm gonna hot glue some twine to the back of the piece, kind of at the top, and I'll just wrap it around and then hot glue it to the back, cutting off any excess. Now to make it look like a tassel, I'll cut it at the bottom, and then I'm gonna trim the tassel so all of the pieces are the same size. You can dress this up with any plant that you have around your house, but it just gives it a little something extra. So for this DIY, you're going to need 
three candle snuffers from Dollar Tree. You're also gonna need three succulents. And then I also grabbed three wood boards in different sizes from Lowe's. Now, if you have a pair of wire cutters, that's gonna work the best for this DIY. You're gonna cut your candle snuffer right at that base where the handle is attached to it. Next, I'm going to hot glue my succulents into my candle snuffers. Now, I added quite a bit of hot glue to the base of these and then just put the succulents in. Now, once I got to this point, I realized that I didn't like the base of the candle snuffers. So I grabbed some of my faux leather and I hot glued it to the back. I wrapped it around twice and then cut off the excess and just hot glued that in place. I felt like this did a good job of kind of finishing off that bottom piece. And then I positioned my succulents where I wanted to hot glue them down. And then from there, all I had to do was hot glue them to the wood pieces. Now to hang this on the wall, you could always put hangers on there. I've been loving using command strips on the back. So you just grab a couple of command strips. I'll link to the ones I use down in the description box, and then you can just place them on the wall. And here's how this wall art piece turned out. I love the way that plants brighten up any space, especially a bathroom. So I wanted to create a plant holder. I had these four Dollar Tree frames that I think I bought maybe a couple of months ago, but you can probably find something similar at Dollar Tree because they pretty much keep the same frames out most of the year. So you're gonna need four for this project. Now mine are black and gold. I love the color of them. So I went through and I pulled out that backing piece in the frame. So I wanted to have some kind of black and white picture in the frame. I grabbed some of this adhesive wallpaper off of Amazon, but you could use scrapbook paper, wrapping paper, anything you have on hand for this project, just whatever your needs are. And I'm gonna trace that around my paper where I wanna cut it out. I'm gonna cut out the four squares. and then I'll put the squares back into my frames. I did pull off that backing piece of the frame because I'm not going to need that. Then from there, I hot glued the frames together so they created a box. Now I'm not worried about creating a base to this because it's always gonna be sitting down that it doesn't really need a base. From there, you can style it with your favorite plant or faux plant. One of the best ways to get a higher end look at Dollar Tree is to go for items that are in the glassware section because you can spend so much more on glassware and it's literally the same thing you can buy at Dollar Tree. So I found these two interesting vases that I wanted to dress up a little bit from Dollar Tree. So I have this product, you guys have heard me talk about it before, it's called Rub and Buff. I'll link it for you down in the description box. I use it all the time, I know, but I just love it. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of one of the gold colors and to paint onto your piece, you can use this for anything, metals, glasses. I'm just going to use a foam brush and when you put this product on, you almost wanna dab it on. It actually goes better when you do it that way. I'm gonna dab it on the lid of one of the pieces. Now for the littler jar, I'm gonna tape it off with frog tape and just dab it on the bottom. I'll remove the frog tape and literally this is a five minute craft you can do, but look how cute these vases look. One of the new items I was excited about at Dollar Tree are these ceramic containers. Now I think Dollar Tree had an idea of making these like frames that you could use for a wedding, but I had something completely different in mind. There's three different shapes. There's like a rectangular one, a circular one, and then this other one that looks kind of like a butterfly. I also picked up some stickers. So I started by taking the frame pieces off the back as well as the stickers on the back. Now I saw in my mind soap dish, trinket tray, 
you know, all those things for these. I thought they'd be perfect for a bathroom. One of my tricks for whenever you want to put stickers on any surface, cut it out first and actually put it onto your tray. That way you can get a visual, kind of move things around until you make that commitment of actually sticking it in place. So I cut out all the stickers and that's what I did. I just kind of moved them around until I was happy with the placement of them. Then I just stuck them onto the ceramics. Again, I'm gonna be using that same Mod Podge that I used earlier. It's a blue dishwasher safe Mod Podge, and I'm going to be doing a thick coat on each of the ceramic containers. Once that dries, you can add them to your bathroom. You could put a soap container on there. You could also put little decorative soaps or maybe even leave it out for like rings or earrings. What are you doing? You're always on the floor. <laughs> Just at Dollar Tree planning DIYs. I know, I shouldn't be on the floor. They have a bunch of new mirror selections right now. So I'm thinking they would make a really great wall art grouping. The thing about decor at Dollar Tree is a lot of times it's smaller. So you need to get multiple items to make it look more substantial. So I'm gonna grab five different styles of mirrors and then I'm gonna make them look similar and show you how to put them as a wall art piece. The first thing I did for this project was add tape to all of the mirrors so that when I was spray painting them, I wouldn't get any paint on the actual mirror portion. If you do get a little bit of paint, you can always scrape it off, but I just prefer to do this at the beginning of the project. I wanted to change the appearance of a couple of the mirrors, so I grabbed some Dollar Tree bamboo skewers and I'm going to place them on the back and just hot glue them in place. I kind of was just figuring this out as I went. I ended up cutting down some of the skewers. I was hot gluing them in place, but this was a lot of fun just kind of figuring out how to add a little bit of depth to each of the mirrors. And then I added some tape to the back to just kind of hold it in place. Then with my other mirror, I thought that one would look great if I just did four dowel rods. So I put one coming out of each of the corners. Those are the only two mirrors that I added wood dowels to. Next, I'm going to spray the back side of all the mirrors with this like aged gold spray paint. I turned all of the mirrors over and spray painted the front. Next, I'm gonna be using Rub and Buff. Now, I wanted my mirrors to have different colors of gold. That's just gonna give it a lot more dimensions. I'm gonna add the Rub and Buff with a foam brush across the mirrors. It's not gonna completely cover what I spray painted, but it's going to be a nice highlight or accent color. Once that had a chance to dry, I removed the tape. And again, I think the best way to add these to your walls would be to use command strips. Another tip you can try is to lay them out on your floor before you actually place them on your wall to figure out the configuration you want. But here's how these mirrors turned out. And for under $10, I have a really pretty grouping of mirrors. I picked up a planter from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some nautical rope that I had on hand, and don't worry, I'll link all the supplies that I used down in the description box. So with my planter, I wanted to hot glue my nautical rope so it created an X on my planter. So I figured out how long I needed the pieces to be, cut them off, and then cut off several pieces that were gonna be the same length. I hot glued the nautical rope in one direction on my planter.
I came back through and hot glued the other way with pieces that I had cut. Once I had all of the X's done, I decided to add some handles as well. So I hot glued handles on either side of my planter. So here's where the fun part comes in. I grabbed some quick crete from Lowe's and I'm gonna use that to make this planter look concrete. So you're going to get your quick crete and mix it with some water. Now, typically I like the consistency of my quick crete to be a little bit like pudding, but I wanted it to be a little bit thinner so that I could use it to paint all over this planter. But the cool thing is if you get it too runny, you can add more quick crete and if it's too thick, just add more water. Next, I'm gonna take a foam brush. You need something that's gonna be disposable and I'm gonna paint all around my planter, covering it completely. Now you wanna make sure you really get around all the nautical rope and I'm gonna let this dry completely overnight. Once it sits overnight, now you have a really cool concrete planter that you can put any plant in to display. This next piece is a wall art piece. So you're gonna to need to grab two canvases from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need a stick from your backyard. I love going out in my backyard and grabbing sticks. So just grab a couple for this project. They don't need to be too big. And then you're going to need some yarn in whatever color you wanna use. I just grabbed some for my stash, but they also sell yarn at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by hot gluing my stick to the center of my canvas. I was trying to figure out if I should use hot glue or E6000 on the canvas. I ultimately decided that E6000 would probably be the better option here. So I'm gonna put some E6000 down and I'm going to place my yarn on the E6000 and cut it at the end. I really wanted my pieces of yarn to be the same size and I thought about cutting them before, but I ultimately decided that I should cut them on the canvas because once they go over the stick, I was afraid that they wouldn't be the right size and I just lightly press the yarn down into the E6000. Now this is totally a fun piece. You can do different colors, put the yarn wherever you want. I put the yarn in three different places on this stick, kind of based on the shape of this stick. Now on my second canvas, I wanted it to look completely different. So I had this straight stick and I hot glued that down over on the side of the canvas. From there, I started in the middle, just creating long pieces, and I wanted it to kind of taper down to the edges. I love wall art pieces like this because I can be really creative. I just kind of make up the colors and the patterns as I go. I think these two pieces look so great together. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you think of this. I know it's a little out there, but I'd love to know your opinion in the comments. So I'm going to be picking up a couple of the Dollar Tree books. You can get hardback books for only a dollar, so I grabbed three of them. I wanted to customize these books just a little bit, so I'm going to be tea staining the pages. So to do that, you're just going to take any tea bag, it doesn't matter wh what it is, and then you're just going to put it in some water and you're just going to rub it along the edges of your book.
Next, I'll let that completely dry, and then I'm gonna open up the book so that I can paint the outside cover. Now, I wanted them to be kind of a light navy color, and I didn't have that color, so I took two colors I had and mixed them together. I had a blue chalk paint, and I also had ink by Waverly. So I mixed those two paints together, and then I painted the outsides of the books. I went along the edges as well to make sure that I got the edges covered so that when they were shut, it looked nice. When I was at Dollar Tree, I grabbed some of these cool decals that they have. I really love these, and I wanted to put them on the pages of the book. So I cut out some of the designs that I liked, and then to add them to my book, what I did was I held the pages together so that they were really tight together. Then I put the decal down, and then I have this little scraper tool from Cricut, but really you could use anything to put these on, like a, you know, a gift card or anything to add pressure, and hold the pages together Together as you're uh, like rubbing the decal on and make sure you get it completely on before you take off that covering and I wasn't sure how these were gonna turn out but I think they look really cute and then I stacked them up in a grouping and love the way they turned out Lately, I've been seeing a lot of paper mache bowls in high-end decor, and I wanted to try to recreate one on my own. So for this project, I'm gonna be using craft paper. I'm gonna start by cutting my craft paper down in strips. So I got a large roll from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna fold it over until I can cut it into smaller strips. Now don't worry if your strips aren't perfect, they do not need to be by any means. You're also going to need some sort of bowl or shape to mold your paper mache around. So I just grabbed this plastic bowl from Amazon. I'm gonna wrap it with a trash bag and then tape it in place. Next, I'm gonna create my paper mache paste. So I'm gonna be mixing flour with water. You want your paste to be kind of be a thin consistency so that it'll hold up as a paste. Next, I'm gonna start by putting my strips onto my bowl. So I will dip them into the paste. Then I'm gonna wring off any excess paste and I'll add it to the outside of my bowl. I started down at the base and then I kind of wrapped them around the edges and then kind of finished it off at the top. Now with all paper mache, you're gonna have to let it dry overnight before you see how it turned out. I did realize that once it dried, it was a little too white, like I saw too much of the flower, and I wanted it to have more of that brown color. So I went back in and added another layer to the outside. This doesn't hurt it at all, it's just gonna actually make it more sturdy. and then I'll let that dry for another night. Once that dries, I can remove the bowl from the inside. To fill it, I just put some filler down at the base. You can use sacks of any kind, and then I'm gonna top it off with some Dollar Tree moss. And here's how my paper mache bowl turned out. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I love these containers from Dollar Tree for a bathroom organization. I have one in my bathroom now with a gold lid that I use for all of my lipsticks. They're just the perfect size for a bathroom. So I picked up three of them. I started by spraying the lids with two coats of a flat black spray paint. 
Now lately I've been loving a product called Rub and Buff, so I decided which one I wanted to use. I'm gonna use a foam brush to put that around the handle just to make that handle stick out a bit. So I added some cotton balls. I also had some bath salts. I think this would be great sitting out in your bathroom on a shelf or your vanity. Have you ever looked at the soap dishes at Dollar Tree and thought, you know what, these would make really good little trinket trays? Well, that's what we're doing in our next project. I grabbed a black soap dish. I also pulled out of my stash my little half circle beads. And I'm gonna start by hot gluing those all around the edge of my soap container. Then I'm gonna spray paint it with two coats of a glossy black spray paint. This would be really cute sitting next to your sink or your nightstand to throw your jewelry or your rings on. One of my favorite items I was so excited to find were these black and white baskets. When I saw these in the organization section at Dollar Tree, I was like, okay, I'm grabbing these. I love having these kind of baskets to organize underneath my sink in the cabinets, and I just love the color of them. I wanted to personalize them a little bit, so I grabbed one of those little palettes they have at Dollar Tree, and I didn't really have the right tools for this, but I just went with it. I just started pulling the pieces of wood off, and then I used my wire cutters to cut them in half. Now, if I would have been at home, I I probably would have used a saw, but you know what? I just kind of went with what I had. So I needed three of these little wood pieces. Next, I drilled a hole in the top of them so that I could hang them. And then I went in with the stain color Golden Oak and just stained them. I just do one coat with my foam brushes and immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. I let these dry completely because you don't want to add any labels on because they're not going to stick. But while they were drying, I went into Cricut Design Space and all I did was just type out in some of my favorite font, some different words like scrub, wash, hand, and I was meaning like washcloths and hand towels for those. I sent them to cut on my smart white vinyl. I just weeded them out and transferred those onto my wood pieces. I used a little bit of twine to tie them to the baskets. And then from there, I just put in washcloths, hand towels, and little loofah scrubbers. I just think these look so nice and you would never know that they were from Dollar Tree. So I tend to get a lot of inspiration at Dollar Tree just by walking around and what I see. And sometimes when I see something really great, I'm like, okay, I have to figure out a project with this. So I found this scarf and of course I loved it. And when I was writing up my notes, I realized that that scarf just looks like the shirt I'm wearing today. So I must just really like that animal print. I wear a lot of animal print, I know. So I grabbed the scarf and I also grabbed this little Christmas Tupperware container. Now, you don't have to have this same Tupperware container. They have several different variations at Dollar Tree that you can use. This was just kind of what I found at the time. So my idea was that I was going to wrap this scarf around this container and make like a little book basket. But when I started to do that, the red was coming through. So really, if you had a clear container, it would work a lot better. So to fix that problem, what I did was just take some white paint. I used the Waverly paint and did one coat of paint on this. Now, I wasn't worried about this being perfect. I was just trying to cover up that red so that I could wrap it with the scarf. So next, I took my scarf and I cut off one of the ends. And then I started to hot glue it so that the bottom edge was even with the base because I knew that edge was going to be showing. And I just hot glued around the container, making sure that bottom was nice and perfect to the bottom. And once I got to the end, I'm going to hot glue that in place. 
Now with that top portion, I decided to just tuck it into my bowl. With the excess scarf that I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna fold it up and put it in the bottom. And this is a great little book basket that you could put in your children's nightstand or sitting out anywhere. So for a dollar, you get two wreaths, which I thought was great, and I thought they were really cute. So I have a container in my craft space that's just all of my greenery, and a lot of it are boxwoods that I've picked up from Hobby Lobby. Some are boxwoods that I've bought at uh, Walmart, and even some from Dollar Tree. So I am going to mix a variety of that greenery and put it down in like the bottom left corner of my wreath. I kind of just keep adding until I like the look of it. And I always like to use hot glue to put the pieces on. Now to hang this up, you can do a lot of different options. I'm gonna be coming in with burlap and then another farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'll just hang it up on my door. And this is a really simple and inexpensive way to create a wreath for really next to nothing when you consider how much wreaths typically cost. I found this vase at Goodwill. It was really affordable and I love the shape on it. So I'm gonna start by spray painting it with two coats of black spray paint. Now you don't need to go out and spend money on expensive vases when you can buy them so inexpensively at the thrift store or Dollar Tree. And to hold them in place, I'm actually going to put some Dollar Tree rocks at the bottom. These are just some black ones I had on hand. To dress it up, I'm gonna put a few eucalyptus stems. You can get these anywhere. Mine are from Target. I'm gonna take all the eucalyptus and tie it together with one of the rubber bands. The small little clear rubber bands that I bought from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna fold them in half so I'm not even going to have to cut my florals and put them down into the middle. And here's a look at the black face. I love that Dollar Tree has out all of their spring items right now. I picked up one of these little tins from Dollar Tree. They had these last year and they're great for projects. Next, I'm gonna use some of my macrame cord. I'm gonna start on the back and I'm just going to hot glue it to the back and start wrapping it around, hot gluing whenever I get to the back. Now, I use this macrame cord in a lot of projects. I will link to it down in the description box so you can go check it out. Next, I wanted to spray paint this piece, so I'm going to be taping off the top half of it. So I'm just gonna take my painter's tape and go about halfway up and tape it off. Now I didn't wanna get any spray paint on the top, so I grabbed some of my craft paper and I'm just going to tape that around the top so I completely seal off the top edge.
Next, I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna come in with my spray paint. Now, whenever you're spray painting fabric or yarn, you can actually go a little bit heavier with your spray paint. So I went in and only did one coat of this black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. Next, I removed the tape and I set it out in my hallway and I'm gonna add in one of my favorite new plants. This is a hanging plant that I got at Ikea and I'm just going to put that in and kind of move the branches around and I just think this looks so gorgeous. The last time I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I was so excited to find these little candle holders. I feel like it's been forever since Dollar Tree has had these. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you wanna do that at List of my DIY because I post all of my Dollar Tree shopping trips. So for this project, you wanna get six of the candle holders so that we can make a grouping. Now my Dollar Tree had black and they also had white. So just pick your favorite or you could always paint them later. You're going to want to grab some E6000 or some adhesive glue like Gorilla Glue. With one of your candle holders, you're going to keep that completely separate. That's going to be your bottom tier. Then you're going to create a second tier. So you're going to take one of the candle holders, add some E6000, and then you're going to take another candle holder and put it on top so that you have stacked up two candle holders. I felt like these candles really matched up nicely. I didn't feel like I needed to put anything around the edge or anything. Now for the tallest one, you're gonna actually stack up three of the candle holders. You're gonna start with one, add your E6000, put on the top and then put on the middle one, add some more E6000 and then put on the very top one. Let these dry completely overnight. I'm gonna be adding in some candles from Ikea. I find that they have nice large candles that are really inexpensive. You could also grab candles like this at Walmart. And I think these three look great together in a grouping. I picked up two of the larger vases that they had at Dollar Tree. I also picked up a canvas from Dollar Tree and then a 12 by 12 canvas from Walmart. One of my favorite things to do are these paint pour techniques. I just think they're so fun. And I thought this would be a great excuse to try out some of the Dollar Tree paints. So I grabbed a wide variety of paints in blues, greens, whites, black. They didn't have a gold, so I used a gold that I had on hand. And then I think I also had a yellow. To start this project, you're gonna take your vase and you're going to put it onto your canvas. Now, you're supposed to put a cup underneath your vase, which I messed up on the first one, but I remember to do it on the second one. That way you can easily move your vase, which I didn't do very well. So you're going to put your vase upside down on your canvas. Next, you're gonna take your paints and put them into a cup and you're just gonna alternate the colors. From there, you're gonna start at the top of your vase and begin pouring them down your vase. Now you need to make sure you have enough paint so it's going to cover completely. With one of mine, I actually had to go back in and add additional paint, but that's okay. Now give that a chance to run down. Once your vase is totally covered, you can move your vase off of your canvas. That's gonna leave your canvas with a ton of paint. So then it's fun to move your canvas around and make a piece of wall art from your canvas. So it's kind of like a two-in-one type a project which I think is fun. So I did this with a smaller canvas as well as the 12 by 12. Now I actually kind of messed up the 12 by 12 a little bit. I kind of fudged it and so I wasn't really happy with the 12 by 12 but the smaller frame turned out really well. Now you want to let these sit overnight and dry because they're still going to be dripping off excess paint. Then the next day I'll actually come in and move the piece and let it dry again for another day. It's probably going to need a good 24 hours for everything to completely dry. Here's a look at how these fun vases and the canvas turned out. I definitely needed to create a wreath. I'm going to be using those gold rings that I love from Walmart. You can get them in a pack of three for $2.88. I'm going to be using the larger one. I also picked up a variety of florals from Dollar Tree and also some eucalyptus garland from Walmart. 
So I'm gonna start by adding the eucalyptus garland to the bottom portion. Next, I'm gonna be adding the white florals that I pulled off and add those to the bottom of the wreath. Now, all of these pieces I'm gonna be hot gluing on. I also had this little lavender mix that had some really cool like greenery pieces. So I'm gonna pull those off and add those around as well. Next, I just went in and added where I needed to add. So if I needed some more eucalyptus or some more white flowers, I added those in. Now this would be perfect on your front door. Here's a look at our wreath. Next up, we're going to make a soap container. Now my Dollar Tree, when I went there, they were completely out of any soap containers. So I came up with another option that we're gonna do. So I found this container. It was actually in the, what do you call it? Like kind of the vase section at my Dollar Tree. And it was a little treat jar and it was a mason jar type of container. And then I'm gonna be using a soap that I already had. I'm gonna be using the top from that, but you could always pick up you know, a soap lid, you know, just use one that you have around your house. So I'm going to spray the metal portion of the lid and the top of my soap container with a flat black spray paint. And both of these are gonna take two coats. Then I'm gonna spray paint the base of my mason jar container white. So next I need to create an opening so that I can put my soap dispenser into the mason jar lid. So to do this, I got out my wire cutters and I tried to pull an opening and cut it off the best that I could. It didn't look super cute on the underside, but you're not gonna be able to see it, so I wasn't as concerned about that. Then I will take the lid to my soap container and put it on top of the new mason jar container. I created a label that says soap and all I'm going to do is cut that out. I'm gonna use that same blue container Mod Podge and put the label down, let it completely dry, and then I'm gonna put a good top layer over the top of it. From there, all you have to do is fill your container with soap and put the lid on the top. Now to make a matching set, I wanted to make a toothbrush holder. So I was able to find this white one at Dollar Tree. And you guys, when you pick these up anywhere else, they can be quite a bit more expensive. So I love getting these at Dollar Tree and they look like something you would buy anywhere. So I wanted to add a little label to it that said brush. So I'm going to cut out my label and use those same steps to Mod Podge, let it dry and then put a layer of Mod Podge on the top. This is really easy to do. If you want to add additional layers of Mod Podge just to make it a little bit more protected, you could do that as well. And I think these two look really cute together. Next up, I was really excited to find this container in the party section. It was such a cool form and I really liked it. And I, I hadn't seen this container before. You'll have to let me know if you guys have seen this one before. But again, I spray painted it with two coats of white spray paint. I created a sign that says hand towels for this one and I'm just going to cut it out. I'm gonna use my same technique of putting on the Mod Podge. As you can tell, these projects are really repetitive, but they're all super easy to do and something you could do to create easy vanity decor. I'm gonna go in with my paint pen all around the top of this container. Next, I grabbed a package of white hand towels. You could use anything that you have on hand, and I'm just going to roll them all up and put them into my container. And this container actually held quite a few hand towels. And this is how they look all together. I 
I get people leaving comments saying some of the DIYs you do are hard to find. So I wanted to come up with some ideas that everyone could find at any Dollar Tree store. So I'm going to be picking up a couple of the Dollar Tree books. You can get hardback books for only a dollar. So I grabbed three of them. I wanted to customize these books just a little bit. So I'm going to be tea staining the pages. So to do that, you're just going to take any tea bag. It doesn't matter wh what it is. And then you're just going to put it in some water and you're just going to rub it along the edges of your book. Next, I'll let that completely dry, and then I'm gonna open up the book so that I can paint the outside cover. Now, I wanted them to be kind of a light navy color, and I didn't have that color, so I took two colors I had and mixed them together. I had a blue chalk paint, and I also had ink by Waverly. So I mixed those two paints together, and then I painted the outsides of the books. I went along the edges as well to make sure that I got the edges covered so that when they were shut, it looked nice. When I was at Dollar Tree, I grabbed some of these cool decals that they have. I really love these and I wanted to put them on the pages of the book. So I cut out some of the designs that I liked and then to add them to my book, what I did was I held the pages together so that they were really tight together. Then I put the decal down and then I have this little scraper tool from Cricut, but really you could use anything to put these on like, a, you know, a gift card or anything to add pressure and hold the pages together together as you're uh, like rubbing the decal on and make sure you get it completely on before you take off that covering. And I wasn't sure how these were going to turn out, but I think they look really cute. And then I stacked them up in a grouping and love the way they turned out. I love all the pottery that I find on the Pottery Barn website. And I came across this one vase and I thought, man, I'm gonna really try to recreate this. Now it doesn't look exactly like it, but it was definitely inspired by this vase. So I grabbed one of their more traditional vases that they have at Dollar Tree. You should definitely be able to find this one. And then I also picked up a container of Dollar Tree spackling. So I started by putting on gloves because anytime you're working with spackling, you definitely need to have on gloves if you're going to be getting messy with it like I was. Next, I took that spackling and I'm just going to apply it around my base. On the original picture, the texture kind of came out and I was trying to figure out how to create that. So I'm going to be using just a little stick that I had off of one of the crates they sell at Dollar Tree. You could use a popsicle stick, a pen, pretty much anything for this. And I'm just going to create lines by pulling off the spackling around the vase. And I'll do that all the way down. I wasn't precise about this. I freehanded it because honestly, I wanted it to look a little rusty so I wasn't worried about it being perfect. I let this dry completely overnight before I decided to paint it. Then I added in some matte white spray paint just to give it an overall look. Now the next part was kind of fun. I always love it when I start painting and I really don't know how things are going to turn out. So I grabbed some different acrylic paints that I had in a variety of browns and golds. And I'm also going to be using like this little shelf liner thing that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. But honestly, you could use anything for this. You could use a paper towel or you could also use like a Dollar Tree sack. And I just started by dabbing the paint all around the base and I concentrated the paint primarily on the bottom and the top because I wanted the paint to be more concentrated on those two areas. Now, as I was going, I realized that I wanted the paint to be more muted and not so vibrant. So I decided to get some water and mix that in with my paints. When I did that, it really gave me that look I was going for of a muted look. So I like the way that looked. Thank you. 
Then I decided I needed to add in some black around the top and the bottom edges. And I just worked with it until it had that look that I was going for. And here is the final look. I wanted to make a distressed tray for my kitchen table, so I hit up Dollar Tree for some supplies. I found these little wooden cars and thought the wheels of these would be great for making the feet to my tray. Dollar Tree didn't have the size board that I needed, so I just went out to my garage and grabbed a long board. Honestly, you can use any board you have, any size will work for this project. Now you may be able to use your scissors for this next portion, but I actually used wire cutters and it worked really well. I cut off the dowel rods that were connecting the wheels to the cars, so I was just left with the little circles. Next, I wanted my board to look really distressed. So I came in with my hammer and I just kind of had fun, you know, tearing up this board a little bit, getting it a little bit beaten and worn looking. You can do this with a hammer. You can use pretty much anything to do this with. Next, I took the circles and I glued them to the outside of my board to make a little feet. And I doubled them up so that I had two little wheel circles. If you wanted it to be higher, you could always add in additional little circles. I'm using the color golden oak and I'm just going to wipe on one layer and then wipe off the excess. That's all there is to making this cute tray. Next, what I did with it was I put it out on my kitchen table. I'm just gonna decorate it with some plants and a book and some candlesticks. And here's a look at how the tray turned out. So this next hack is one that I use every year in the springtime. So Dollar Tree has these awesome solar lights. They work well. I've never had one that really hasn't worked well. So I picked up three solar lights and then I also picked up three of these cute new little glass containers that they have in the plate section at Dollar Tree. So you're going to remove the bottom half of your solar lights. You're also going to remove the lids on your glass container. Next, you're going to add hot glue to the outside of your solar light and you're going to stick it down into your container. Now, this is so easy. I like to set these out on my patio. They illuminate and make great light on your patio in the evening. So I told my husband that this next project was probably my new favorite project. And of course he looked at me like I was crazy because he definitely sees all the DIYs in our house. But I love the way this turned out, you guys. So I picked up a green planter at Dollar Tree. Next, I went outside and grabbed a large stick. Now you want this to be about, I would say about three fourths of an inch to an inch in diameter. I didn't uh, film myself cutting this down because when I cut this down it was when the temperatures were like in the negatives so it was just enough for me to run out to my backyard to get a stick and bring it inside so sorry there's no clip of me getting this stick now I did trim up my stick a little bit so that it was in the shape of basically I was wanting it to kind of be in more of a topiary shape so you want it to have some branches to it so I wanted the base of it to just be real clean and then I wanted a few sticks at the top that I could use to add in some more branches. I went to Walmart and I grabbed three of their olive branches. These are in the floral section. They're $3 each. I've gotten these several times, so hopefully your store has them. Next, I'm gonna start cutting off the individual branches. I want them to be about this long, but you'll see as you get them that when you cut them off, that's about how long they are. 
Now, how are we going to add these to our tree? Well, I wanted it to look really realistic. So what I did was I took my drill and I put a drill bit on that was about the same thickness as my branches. And I started to drill down into my tree branch. And you have to be really careful when you do this. You don't want to press too hard. Otherwise your branch is just going to snap. That's why I said, make sure it's at least three fourths to an inch thickness. That way it's not going to automatically break whenever you start doing this. And then I'm just going to drill down. Now, if you drill down at an angle, that's going to help whenever you stick the branch in for it to kind of stick up at like the right type of angle that a normal branch would stick out. Like if you did it just sideways, it's going to kind of stick out to the side. So I started by just drilling holes all around and sticking my branches in. Now, some of my branches went through and they stuck really well. Some of them I had to add in some hot glue. So it may just vary, but I did have my hot glue gun out and if I needed it, I'd add a little bit of hot glue to the branch to put it in. Now, as you're doing this, start kind of forming your branches. So kind of move them up, twist them, just to kind of see what they're gonna look like. Then you can see the areas where you need to add in more. I wanted to get my tree set in the pot before I went any farther. Now you could use concrete for this. What I had on hand was plaster of Paris. So what I did was I just put the plaster in the existing pot and then I added in water. When I first did this, I had a little bit of a mess because I forgot about the little opening down at the bottom. So I quickly took some hot glue and just put hot glue on the edge so that I sealed that up so that it wasn't a problem. But you're just gonna mix your plaster or your cement with water and until it's about, I would say, three-fourths of the way up. And then I put my plant in the middle. To hold this in place, you could probably use some popsicle sticks. I had some wooden spoons, so I put those around, but that wasn't strong enough to hold it. So I actually had to use painter's tape and tape around this so it could really hold in place. I let this sit and dry for 24 hours. Then I came back the next day and took the tape off. Some of the areas where I cut the branch off, it, I just felt like they stuck out too much. So I went in with my gray elephant paint and just lightly painted over those areas. I also came in with a white paint and painted over it as well. And yes, it looks like paint, but I think it makes it blend in more. And if you're back from a distance, you don't notice that it's paint. Now I still had a few leaves and branches and olives left. So what I decided to now was go in with my hot glue gun and just start putting in olives and like little branches where I felt like there was some empty areas or sparse areas. Then I filled the whole entire thing up with rocks. I love this piece so much. I put it up on my mantle. I would say my favorite thing this year that I have found at Dollar Tree are these cool little hanging shelves. I find these at places like Five Below and you see them in all the stores, but to find them for a dollar is so awesome. So I picked up three of them at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna be making a simple continuous shelf and I wanted to show you how to do that. So you're gonna keep one of your shelves completely intact. Then you're going to take another shelf and you're going to cut the strings off at the top, wherever that metal piece is. I just took the metal piece out and cut it at the top. Next, I'm going to leave my shelf that I have intact the way it is. And then with the shelf that I cut, I'm gonna take those pieces of twine and I'm going to tie them around the knots at the bottom of my top shelf. Once I tie a knot, I'm also going to add in some hot glue just to hold them and make them really secure. Now, the thing that you want to make sure is that your shelf is as level as possible so that when you add decor to this, it's not going to fall off. You're going to repeat those same steps with another shelf on the bottom. Now, you could make this as tall as you want it. I just added in the three shelves. Now I knew I would have questions on how to decorate this. So I wanted to show you guys me actually decorating this. So I think with a shelf like this, you wanna pick similar items. So I went with terracotta pots since it's spring and summer, and I added terracotta pots to all three of my shelves. 
Then I added in a little bit of greenery and I'm also going to be using accent white pieces just to kind of tie the whole look together. When you do a shelf like this, you just wanna make sure that you pick similar colors so it all looks cohesive. And here's a look at how the shelf turned out. Next, I'm going to be making some really cool risers. I'm gonna be using these square wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I just love that Dollar Tree now has these wood items in their craft section. Let me know down below if your Dollar Tree has these wood craft items. I'd really like to know how many actually have them. And then I'm also going to be using some of the Dollar Tree wood cubes. Now these are really simple to make. I'm just going to take some hot glue and put my cubes onto the back of one of the squares. Now on my second one, I'm going to put on two cubes to make the riser a little bit taller to give me a little bit of variation. Now, since these are wood, I don't want to pass that up. So I'm gonna be using a wood stain in golden oak. And I'm just simply going to brush on the stain and wipe it off. These take me literally five minutes to make and they're great to elevate plants or any kind of decor that you want to. This next trend is with creating wall art with craft paper. So I decided I would make my own with products from Dollar Tree. So I picked up a roll of craft paper. I also picked up a really long bamboo skewer. Now they have these out at Dollar Tree in like their section, whether it's like their barbecue type stuff. So this is the time of year where they're gonna be putting these out. So I, I have a pack of them. I bought mine last year, but grab a pack of them because they're great for projects. So I started by taking the skewer and sticking it through the paper. Then I used some twine that I already had and I'm gonna tie it to both sides. Now, after I tied it, I did go back in and add a little glue to the edge just to make sure it was really secure. Next, you're gonna roll out your paper however long you want it to be for your project. Now, since the paper is in a roll, it's going to naturally roll up and I didn't want that to happen. So I found some wood that I already had on hand. These are actually shims that I purchased for another project. You could use a piece of wood, you could use a piece of cardboard, pretty much anything here. And what I did was I glued it at the bottom of the paper and then I wrapped it up one time and glued it in place. Now, whenever I hang this up, it's going to weigh down the bottom so it's nice and straight. Then I took the paper and flipped it over to the front side. I picked up a sponge in like the little loofah section at Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut the sponge in half so I have a half circle. Next, I'm gonna use my Waverly White Chalk Paint. I'm going to make a fun pattern across the edge. Now, this I just kind of did randomly. Sometimes I take my half circle and put them both the same direction. Sometimes I face them to each other, flip them out. Really, this is the fun part, being creative. I just tried to not use the same pattern next to each other in the little grid. And I did this all the way up. You could repeat this pattern for however big you wanted your piece to be. Let this dry completely, and then you have a really cute boho wall hanging to hang up. In one of my recent Dollar Tree videos, I was so excited to find these new pots that they have out at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has never carried planters that are this big. This is awesome. And I was so excited to do a project with them. Now I was going for kind of a pottery barn look with this piece. So I started by spray painting one coat of white spray paint. Now I stopped at one coat because I was going to be adding on different layers and textures. I didn't need it to be completely opaque. Now, I don't know if you guys are sick of seeing me use the quick crete, but I've been loving it for creating a cement look. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit of quick crete, you can buy this at Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those stores, and you're gonna put it in, mix it with a little bit of water. You want it to be kind of like a, a thick pudding consistency. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the quick crete and I'm gonna brush it along the bottom of my container. 
I'm also going to put some along the edges and I'm really treating this quick crease almost like a paint. So I'm putting it on and then I'm going back in with a paper towel to smear off any excess. Now with Quick Crete, you wanna let that set up. So usually what I do is I let it set overnight. Then I decided to come back in and add some color to it. So I've really been loving the color Fawn by Waverly. So I'm gonna use that color and mix that in just to give it more contrast. You could add in some more white. You could even add in some more grays if you wanted to as well. I added color until I was happy with it. And here's a look at how I styled it. So I found this really cute cutting board in the seasonal section at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if it was Easter or spring, but it was really cute. So I'm gonna start by just flipping the cutting board to the back and I'm gonna spray paint with two coats of spray paint on the back. And you may have to do a third coat because sometimes this cork doesn't take spray paint really well. So you wanna make sure it's completely covered. Next, I'm gonna use one of my favorite products from Dollar Tree, which is the cork. They sell this over in their like wood section with all the craft items. So I wanted to add the cork to the bottom of my cutting board. So I'm just going to put it on the cork, trace around the cutting board and cut it out. This was really easy to do. Then you can just add your cork to your cutting board. I'm also going to repeat that same step by making a little strip for the top of my cutting board. I'm also gonna go around the edges with a black paint pen. And then to finish it off, I'm gonna be using some burlap ribbon that Dollar Tree just started selling this year for the top. And here's a look at my cutting board. So there's so many fun hacks around Dollar Tree bases. I actually saw this hack on TikTok. If you guys aren't following me on TikTok, you really should. I post fun videos of all my DIY projects. My name on TikTok is Liz from DIY. But this project I saw, so you just need to get a clear glass container from Dollar Tree. You could really use any one you wanted. I got the round one. And then you're also going to want to get the clear stones that they sell at Dollar Tree. Next, you're going to take your hot glue gun and start putting the stones all around the edge. Now I have to say, whenever I was doing this project, I really liked the way it looked clear. So I definitely think you could have this sitting out looking clear. Like you really couldn't tell that I used hot glue underneath and I thought it looked kind of cool. But in the end, I decided to go ahead and add some spray paint to it. So I used two coats of a matte Rust-Oleum spray paint and I spray painted one side, let it dry and flipped it over and did the other side. You could put any plant in here. I added in a succulent that I had from Dollar Tree. I love high-end decor, but not so much the price tag. I found this wall hanging on Pottery Barn's website, and I knew that I could recreate something for less that would look really cute. So I picked up from Dollar Tree a clear tray that you can get over kind of in like their party supplies section. And then I'm also going to be using some rope. Dollar Tree sells this nautical rope for a dollar, which is a great deal, but I actually like to purchase it in a big spool because I use it all the time. And the one I get is off of Amazon and it's around the same price as the Dollar Tree and I'll link it for you down below. So if you've seen any of my rope trays, I'm gonna start by creating it the exact same way. So I'm gonna hot glue in the middle of my tray and then I'm gonna start tightly wrapping the rope around, adding hot glue as I go to make sure that I don't have any spaces in the rope so you can't see that clear tray behind it. So you're gonna wrap the rope around until you get to the very outside edge. Make sure that you go around your tray so that you don't have any of that clear tray showing at the top. Once you get to the end, you're gonna flip your tray over and hot glue the rest of the rope to the back. 
I wanted to mimic the look of that geometric pattern around the tray. So what I did was I just took some craft paper that I had and cut out a triangle. Next, I'm gonna use painter's tape to really help me out here. So I took several strips of painter's tape and I put it onto a box. You could really put this on any surface that you had. Then I'm gonna take that triangle and put it on top of my painter's tape. Using a Sharpie, I'm gonna trace around the triangle. Next, I'll just cut out that triangle then I'm gonna place it around my tray. Now I'm going to create several triangles like this so that I can place them all the way around my tray. What I'm trying to do is cover up the rope that I do not want to get painted and leave the areas I want to be painted exposed. So I'm gonna create triangles and follow it all the way around my tray. Now I don't want the middle to be painted, so I'm going to use painter's tape on the middle as well. Now that I have the tray all ready, I'm going to spray paint it with three coats of white spray paint. Any kind of fabric or rope is gonna soak up the paint, so you really have to use several coats. Otherwise, it's just not gonna have that same vibrant look, and it's gonna look a little bit more faded. If that's the look you're going for, maybe only do two coats, but I went ahead and did three. Next, I'm just going to remove that tape, and I put this out in a grouping in my home, and I think it looks amazing. My outdoor patio wouldn't be complete without having some fresh herbs. So I wanted to make some really cute signs. I found these little chalkboard signs with the clips on the back at Dollar Tree. Now these are typically pretty easy to find. So I created some labels for the front of these. So I just went into Cricut Design Space, picked out a font that I like, and then I typed out the herb names. I'm gonna print these out on a white smart vinyl. and then I'll just weed them out. I'm gonna use transfer tape to put them on my little chalk signs. Now for my plants, I actually picked up a couple of pots at Walmart. They were $2.50, but I liked how they had the drainage. You could also get something similar at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to transfer the herbs to these cute little white pots. And then I'm gonna clip the labels on the top and style them on my coffee table. Next, we're gonna make a really cool rug from Dollar Tree products. So I picked up a rectangular rug at Dollar Tree. So I wanted my rug to actually be a half circle. So I found this piece of basket weave that I had in my craft room to make it be a nice curved little section and I taped it down. Next, I traced around that edge to give me that nice even curve. Then I went in and I cut off the excess. Next, I'm gonna be using a nautical rope. Now, I ended up using one and a half spools of this off of Amazon. So I started by making loops at the top of my rope, trying to make the loops as even as possible. And then I would hot glue them to the base of the rug, the black part of the rug, I would hot glue those down. And I made those loops all the way around. Now, I actually kind of figured out this pattern as I was going. Next, I added in three rows of nautical rope. From there, I went to the bottom of my little loop section and started adding in more nautical rope. Then I created another loop section by just hot gluing them together. And I didn't measure this. I tried to just make it as even as possible when I was creating my loops. And then I finished the piece off by just continuing on with the nautical rope. 
And here's a look at how this rug turned out. So this next project is probably my favorite one that I created in this whole bundle. I love these little candy dishes that you can buy at Dollar Tree. Now these are located over in like the party supply section and I always like to pick up three. Groupings of three just in my opinion look so much better. So I'm gonna start by putting a layer of painter's tape on the top of each of these containers. And I'm gonna to try to make them all look the same and have the tape at about the same level. Then I'm going to spray paint everything with a flat black spray paint. Now this is going to take at least two coats. And I also turned them so they were upside down so that I didn't spray the inside of my containers. Once that has a chance to dry, I will remove the tape. And then you could do so many things with this. I'm gonna be filling it with some natural stones from Dollar Tree and then putting in three of my favorite succulents. This is so quick and easy to do and how adorable does this look sitting out on my table? I love heading to the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. There's always so many great finds. One of the things I found were these wood oval pieces and I picked up three of them. I started by drawing a line on either side of my pieces where I wanted to cut it off with my saw. Next, I lined all three pieces up and cut them with my saw. And I repeated this on the other side as well. Now, after you're done cutting your pieces, if you have any rough edges, you can always sand those down. I grabbed some magnets at Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna hot glue those to the back of my wood pieces. And I think these make really nice looking magnets on my fridge. So I love this time of year when there's all these huge serving platters and I found this really cool one at Dollar Tree. They usually don't have serving platters this big so I had to grab it because I thought it would make the perfect coffee table tray. So I'm going to spray this again with two coats of white spray paint and then to dress this one up I wanted it to have a distressed look. I'm pulling out something that I haven't used in a while, which is my vintage effects wash that has been sold out on Amazon. I've probably just been like hoarding it so that I don't waste it. So I grabbed that and a Dollar Tree brush and I'm just going to lightly brush it around the edge. Now, whenever I'm distressing, I really don't know how it's gonna turn out. So what I like to do is add different layers until I'm happy with the outcome. So I'm gonna brush it around the edge and then I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe away so it's not too much at all. Next, I decided to use a black paint pen from Dollar Tree. These paint pens are bomb. Like they are awesome at Dollar Tree. These are some of the best paint pens I've used. Like if you see them, buy them. I'm just gonna lightly go around the edge of my piece. I'm gonna go back in, add a little bit of brown until I'm happy with the look. That's the awesome thing about distressing is it's totally personal preference. You add as little or as much as you like. And then I'm just going to add some decorative elements, but I think this would be great sitting out as a coffee table tray. It would also be great in like a centerpiece on your kitchen table. The Pottery Barn website has this really cool black bowl, and I thought it would be such a cool little decorative accent to sit out. I kind of scoured around Dollar Tree for some items that would work for it. I found this clear bowl over in the serving bowls that's kind of like a plastic bowl. I thought this is perfect, but then I couldn't find anything that was like the right size. So I ended up getting two of these containers out of the Christmas stuff, and I decided I was gonna use the two lids. 
So that's kind of my trick when I'm at Dollar Tree. So if you have an idea for something you think you want to make, just look around for something that kind of fits the same shape or size. So I took the two lids and I'm going to hot glue them together. Now I wanted them to look very seamless, so I used some poster board that I already had from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to mark it because I want to cut a section that I can wrap completely around the lids. So I'll just cut out that poster board, trying to make it as even as possible. Then I'm going to hot glue the poster board around my lids. Now I wanted the bowl to be really secure. Anytime I want something to be extra secure, I go to E6000. So I'm gonna take that E6000 and put it around the top of the lids and then I'm gonna place the bowl inside. Next, I'm gonna spray paint this with two good coats of a matte black spray paint. Now this isn't a bowl that's edible, but I think it looks great for decor to sit out. You guys will have to let me know what you think. Next up for our vanity, we're gonna to put together a jewelry organizer. I have this clear one from Dollar Tree, and this I typically find over in like the kitchen section in my Dollar Tree, so yours may be a little different. I'm also going to be using some wood beads that I had on hand. These I buy in a big pack from Amazon, and I'm gonna take them out to my garage and I'm gonna spray paint them black. Now, when I spray paint beads, I typically just put them down, spray them, and then once they dry, I'll I'll kind of mix them around and spray them again. Now you may have to do this and spray them two or three times to get them fully coated, but it typically works pretty well. Next, I'm going to hot glue the beads on the bottom of my jewelry organizer to make little feet. I'm also going to hot glue a bead to the top to make a cute little handle. This was so easy to do, and now I have a cute little jewelry organizer to put on my vanity. Rattan and yarn mirrors are really popular right now. So I wanted to recreate one for you guys. So I grabbed an eight by 10 mirror at Ikea. I also grabbed some cardboard. I had this left over from a Dollar Tree project. And I'm gonna start by using my mat to kind of draw out straight lines around my mirror. I want about maybe one and a half inches on each side of my mirror. Next, I'm gonna come in with my rotary cutter and cut straight lines to make my cardboard nice and straight. Then I'm going to hot glue the mirror to the center of my cardboard. I decided I wanted to use macrame around the edge and I wanted it to be braided. So what I did was I cut off really long pieces and I cut off six pieces. And then once I got the long pieces cut off, I taped them down to my craft table. Then I'm gonna take two strands for each of my braid and I'm just gonna do a basic three strand braid. Sorry, I'm kind of sounding like my old hair channel because we used to do four strand and five strand braids. So yeah, you're just gonna do a basic braid. Now I braided all the way to the end. So I had this like big long braid. Now I don't know how, but somehow I made this magically be the perfect size. I was thinking I was gonna have to add additional, but I don't know, somehow it was the perfect size. So at the top, where I had taped it down, I hot glued those pieces together and cut off the excess. And then I started by hot gluing it closest to the mirror, wrapping it around. Once I got the first layer onto my mirror, I wanted to wrap around a second layer. Now, as I was doing that, I had to cut off some of the cardboard because I didn't account for how long the braid was gonna be. So as I went on the second layer, I cut off some extra cardboard. And as you can see, I had just enough to wrap it around the back and hot glue the excess in place. So 
So for this next project, I had a vision in mind, but I wasn't sure it was going to totally work out. So I had my husband help me with the measurements just because he's really good at that. So it ended up working out. So I'm really excited to show this one to you. So what you're going to need for this project are two of the Dollar Tree cutting boards. So we marked both of the boards at five and a half inches. Then we traced the edge of the cutting board because we were going to be cutting it out, but we were only going to be cutting out half of the cutting board. So we marked up three and a half inches. Now here's where we got a little tripped up. We had to figure out which sides we were going to cut so that they sandwiched together. So we kind of drew a little line to know which side to cut. Next, we used a saw to cut out the notches on both of the cutting boards. Now that the hard part was out of the way, all we had to do was sandwich the two together to create a perfect little book holder. This is great to set out as a coffee book holder, or you could also use it when displaying a cookbook. And I'm really excited how this turned out for only $2. So one of the trends I've been noticing on higher end websites is having candles that are in more of a bowl shape and those can be really expensive. So I wanted to show you an option of how you could recreate that for so much less. So I picked up one of the marble bowls that they have just in the regular um, plate and bowl aisle at Dollar Tree. You're also going to need two Dollar Tree candles. I see these at most stores that I go to, so you definitely should be able to find them. I also bought a pack of candle wicks off of Amazon. I got a ton of them for a really inexpensive price. I'll link it down below for you, but these I know are gonna last me forever. So to do this task, it does get on your pots and pans. So I actually bought a really cheap, pan from Walmart that I'm going to specifically use for this task because I've now done this like I think three times and so I want to make sure that I'm not using all of my regular pans so I think this pan was like under five dollars and then I'm just going to put the two candles in and fill it up about halfway with water now you're going to want to let this boil it's going to take probably around 20 minutes for all of the candle wax to melt so wait until the candle wax is completely melted. With the marble bowl, I'm gonna take those candle wicks and I'm actually gonna hot glue them to the bottom of my bowl. Now one of them kind of came up so I had to mess with it a little bit, but that's just gonna help it stay in place whenever you're pouring in your candle wax. So it just helps you to kind of you know, not have them floating around. So this is very hot. You want to make sure that you have on hot pads, all the things, use tongs so that you're not touching it or going anywhere near the candle wax. So once you have your hot pads on and your tongs, you're just going to pour the candle wax into the bowl. I ended up using almost both of the candles to fill up this bowl. And then what I like to do to make sure that the candle wicks stay where I want them to be is I just take some popsicle sticks and lay them over top and then that way they'll kind of stay in place while they're drying. Now this does take a couple of hours to dry and then from there all you have to do is cut off the top of the candle wicks and you have a really cute candle to set out in your home. When I was walking around Dollar Tree, I found this really cute Kindness Matters little bag and I thought it would be perfect for a project. So I grabbed one of my little hoops that I have on my background here. You can get them off of Amazon, I'll link below. And all I did super easy was I just took the bag and I put it through the hoop. Um, once I got it to where it was as even as possible so that it really framed that circle, and then I just tightened the little ring. I then came back and cut off the excess on the back. And that was it. And now I have it displayed out on my backdrop and think it looks great. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, don't mind me. Just uh. Like, wouldn't this be awesome if we use these little guys? Have you guys seen these, these greenery pots? I think it'd be so cool if I make like a board. 
If you're redoing a space, the Milanote app is perfect to have all of your inspiration in one place. I feel like it's similar to like this inspo here where you know you just kind of have pots and a board behind it. I found these big black chalkboard signs. I think that'd be perfect. So let's try it. If it looks good, it looks good. If not, you know. <laughs> it actually looks really good. I think it's gonna be cool. I'm excited. Yeah. I really hope that you guys are able to find those little florals because they're just so cute. So I started by removing all the labels from the chalkboard and I have to tell you, it was quite the chore. They were stuck on there really well. I got out my Goo Gone to really try to get out all the residue. Next, I removed the hangers from all of the pieces. And I'm going to be using those popsicle sticks that we used earlier, and I'm just going to add some hot glue as support pieces between my two signs. Make sure your signs are completely connected before you do this, and I'll do this with a third board as well. Next, I'm just going to mix and match the little greenery until I like the way that it looks. Now, these aren't very heavy, so I was able to put these on there with just hot glue. Again, make sure you're using the construction adhesive glue because if your glue is not that great, it's not going to hold. I also added twine as my hanger on this and just tied it on one edge really well and then tied it to the other edge. So to cover up the holes, I just grabbed some of those popsicle sticks and put black marks on a Sharpie and hot glued them to the back so you weren't able to see the little holes. And here is a final look at how it looks. This would be so cute in your kitchen, but I'm showing you how it looks on my backdrop. So one of the other cool things I like about the Milanote app is it really helps me to stay organized with my projects. So I have a shot list that I use whenever I'm in the store, and this really helps me to make sure that I get all of the footage that I need for the video, so I love that. And then I also have a list of DIYs that I'm doing, so when I'm in the store, I can add in different projects that we see and wanna do, and just kind of fine tune things. So I love that I have access to all of that in one app. So I always like easy macrame DIYs, you guys. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So I'm taking that chalkboard sign that we used earlier. You need something that's hard that you can make your yarn about the same size. And this is so easy to do. I maybe wrapped it around 20, 30 times. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to lay the pieces over top and then I'm gonna put some hot glue in the middle. I'm not even tying them. That's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna do this all the way across. This did take quite a bit of yarn. I think I used maybe one and a half of the yarn spools from Dollar Tree, so make sure you get two. Once I got all of my yarn on, I started with some of my nautical rope. I'll link it down below for you. And I'm just going to wrap it around to kind of cover up where the top of that white piece kind of lays. And I wrapped it around maybe five or six times until I thought it looked good. This is total personal preference. And then I just hot glued it on the back. Next, I wanted to make the pieces as even as possible, so I kind of laid them out and gave them a little haircut at the bottom. This doesn't have to be perfect, just do your best. And here's a look at how this macrame turned out. So I'm over in the party supply section. I have a great idea for a DIY. So I picked up this large bowl. I have this two set of plastic bowls these little mini ones, and then I got this mini size too. So we're gonna put all this together and make a cool DIY for $4 for the structure. Next, I figured out how I wanted to stack up the bowls because I wanted a three-tier tray system. And I'm gonna use the smaller bowls as my separators, and then my larger bowls are gonna be the three tiers. I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to hold the bowls in place. One, because the E6000 is going to hold it longer and I use the hot glue so it would dry quickly so I could go ahead and spray paint it. Once I have all the bowls in place, I'm gonna take it outside and do two coats of a white spray paint. 
Now to fill up this bowl, you could really do a combination of anything. I'm gonna be using some of these natural rocks that I bought at Dollar Tree. And then I'm also gonna fill in with some Dollar Tree succulents. And here's a look at how it turned out. Okay, so we have this little glass container that we were wanting to do something similar to. So I found this glass. They don't have any wood pieces at Dollar Tree, but these stones have a really similar color and a little succulent. Let's put it together. You guys, this is gonna take you a minute to do, but looks so nice sitting out. So just add the rocks to the bottom of your glass container, pull off the base of your succulent, and then you're going to add it into your container. Now I ended up switching out my succulent because it wasn't my favorite, but here's a look at how the piece looks styled. I feel like it's been forever since I've made a pillow out of a rug on my channel. So when I was walking down that section, I found this green fabric and I thought it'd be perfect for a pillow. Now you could definitely sew that and I've done that on my channel before, but I wanted to give you a really simple option. So all you need are two rugs. You're gonna lay them out flat with the sides you like facing out. And then the sides that are folded over, those are gonna be facing in. You're gonna hot glue on three of the sides. You're gonna press that down firmly just to hold it in place. Now to fill this, you could use an already preformed pillow. I had some stuffing on hand, so I'm just going to add in stuffing. You can buy this at Joann's, the thrift store, really a ton of different places. You could use stuffing from another pillow. Once I have it as full as I want it to be, I'm just going to hot glue the end. And here's a look at how my $2 pillow turned out. Have you guys noticed that all of the high-end stores has a version of these chain links? And they're really cute. I think they make great decor, but they're so expensive. So I thought, you know, this would be fun to make. Plus anything that's like really trendy like that, where you know it's gonna go out of style, I don't like to spend a lot of money on. So for this project, I'm going to get a tub of Crayola clay. And I wanna thank you guys for recommending this clay to me. It actually works so much better than the last project Project where I use clay and I asked for your recommendations. So thank you, thank you. This tub that I got, I purchased off of Amazon. I'll link it for you down below. Actually came with four packs in it. And for this project, I used two of the packs. So you could probably buy a lesser amount. I figured I'd use it for another project and I liked that they were sealed up. That way it's not gonna go bad. So what I decided to do to make these chains is I grabbed out just a good amount of the clay and I started to roll it out. Then I decided I needed to make it pretty uniform. So I figured out you know, the diameter that I wanted it to be. So I thought that I wanted each of them to be about an inch wide in diameter. And then I used just a little cutting tool that they have at Dollar Tree and I cut off one edge and then I cut the other edge off at 17 inches. I thought that would make it really uniform and I wouldn't have to worry about them looking different. And then I just took the two pieces and put them together and tried to smooth it out so you didn't see that edge link. But I wasn't really worried about that because most chains have a little link like that so I wasn't worried about that. And then I set that piece up to the top and I repeated this for each of my links. As I kept making new links, I would check the thickness to make sure that the thickness was similar to the links that I already made because I wanted them to look pretty uniform. Then whenever I got one done and cut it, I would wrap it inside of one of my other links so that they were all connected together. Now, after you put in as many links as you want, the next thing you wanna do is shape it to kind of figure out how you want it to look because whatever shape it's in, that's how it's gonna be sitting out on your coffee table. So if you wanna elevate it, elevate it now. Work with it until you're happy with the way that it looks. Then you wanna let it dry for 24 hours. Now, I will say with this clay that the longer I let it sit, the more it dried. So I would say I didn't paint it until about day two, but but it's, I've had it now for a long time and it's gotten harder over time. 
So this next part is totally your personal preference. I wanted it to first be painted white, so it was just a really consistent white color. So I went in with Waverly White Chalk Paint and painted it white. Now the color washing that I decided to do for this piece is, is, I didn't really want it to have that much color, but I came in, I mixed a yellow and a red color, and I put that on, it kind of gave me like a mustardy color. And so I wiped that on and it was just, it was way too thick. So I came in with water. Anytime you want to dilute a paint, you want to add in water. So I added in water and then I took a paper towel and immediately wiped it off. So this gave me just a tiny, tiny bit of color, really not a lot at all. Then I wanted it to have a little bit of brown. So I used my vintage effects wash and put that on, wiped it with water the same way and wiped off any excess. So in the end, it just gave me a tiny, bit of color on this piece but that was the look I was going for if you wanted it to be more of a wood look you could definitely add more color you know really you could customize this any way you wanted you could even go with gray here's a look at how it looks sitting out on my tray Dollar Tree has really inexpensive things that you can put together that make a great look in your bathroom vanity the first thing I found were these really cool white tiles at Dollar Tree. I love the size of them and they kind of were ceramic and to me they just fit really well in a bathroom. I didn't like the sayings on them but I figured I could work with them. I created a printable that I will leave for you guys down in the description box and I just put some words that I thought would be great in a bathroom like relax, unwind, soak. I'm gonna put the block down on top of the words and I'm going to trace around them. Next, I'm just going to cut out the words, making sure that I don't get any of the trace marks in where I'm cutting. And then I'm gonna make sure that I round the corners out. That way it's gonna fit perfectly on my little tile. I'm going to repeat this for the other three words. Now recently I picked up a new type of Mod Podge. It is a water-based Mod Podge and the directions say that you can put it in the dishwasher. So I thought since these were going to be items in a bathroom, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more waterproof. So I'm gonna start by putting a layer of Mod Podge down on my tile and then I'm gonna put my label on top of that. Now you want to let that completely dry before you try putting Mod Podge on the top of your paper. So once that's completely dry, I'll put a layer of Mod Podge on the top. Now I've been loving these black paint pens that they have at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go around the edges of all of my signs once everything's dry and just give it a little distressed finish. I think when everything's white like this, you need to kind of pull out some detail. And I think these make perfect decor for a bathroom.